So there's a lot of excitement and fervor for Ram Bhaks around the country on the inauguration of the Ram Mandir, which is expected in January of 2024. The Prime Minister is expected to inaugurate the temple sometime in the third week of January uh, to get us a ringside view, a sneak peek into what Ram Bhaks across the world can expect and how uh, the trust itself is gearing up for what is expected to be record numbers of pilgrims coming in on a daily basis. I'm joined by a very special guest here on CNN News 18. Mr. Nipin Mishra is the chairperson of the Sri Ram Janbhumi Tirtha Shetra Trust. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. First things first, uh, you've had many uh, profiles in your life, many jobs you've done before as secretary to the government, as TRAI chairperson, but the chairperson of the Sri Ram Janbhumi Tirtha Shetra Trust. When the Prime Minister called you and said he wants you to take charge of this project, what did he tell you? What was, what was the brief he gave you and how did you approach this job? Because I'm sure it's very different from whatever you did. Well, it will require a bit of uh, clarification. I am born out of the Supreme Court judgment. True. The judgment said that there will be a trust mm -hmm. which will be autonomous. Mm -hmm. And presently that trust is headed by Nirti Gopal Das Ji. Swami. Yeah. And the General Secretary is Champat Raiji. The judgment had also envisaged and clarified and clearly said that the construction will be in the hands of a construction committee, mm -hmm. which will be headed by chairman of the construction committee. So I am born out of that. I am chairman of the construction committee of Ram Temple. Mm -hmm. So that is what. Now, ask about the uh, second yeah. part. I was really not called by Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, there were uh, inquiries made, and I had also uh, casually mm -hmm. talked about the possibilities uh, because it was uh, something very new which came from the judgment. It was Correct. not envisaged. Correct. So I had just mentioned this casually to the Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister. It is possible that he may have conveyed it to the Prime Minister, that this is what Mr. Mishra has said. The inquiry came from Home Ministry, okay. because they were responsible for the final drafting of the trust, mm -hmm. the document mm -hmm. which got registered. And they wanted to know if I would like to and in the event, if I am willing to accept that job, then they were keen that the draft of the trust deed must be seen by me. So all that happened uh, before the registration took place. Okay. So tell us a little bit more. Everybody knows that uh, the inauguration of the temple will happen in January 2024. The Prime Minister will be attending. I know you can't give us confirmed dates, but what is the window that we are, that we are looking at? Uh, we are talking actually not of inauguration. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the understanding for bhakts and devotees and everybody that you provide pran pratishtha, consecration. Yeah. And that is in the idol. Mm -hmm. Let me just first explain to you that what this idol is. You see, there was already a deity which exists yes. of Ram Lala. And that deity has been recognized as a petitioner in the judgment the court, of yeah. the Supreme Court. So that is one which will be installed in the Sanctum Sanctorum. Okay. But in addition, there will be another which is presently being carved. Mm -hmm. And three different sculptors at their own risk are doing the work on the basis of the artwork which the trust gave to them. Sure. The artwork was done by a professor of the Arts College of Banaras Hindu University. Mm -hmm. The professor was told to create a, a picture which will be four to five years old. It will be a standing mm -hmm. yeah. idol. Ultimately, it has to be about 51 inches. All these things have significance because it is closely linked with the technology. Mm -hmm. Based on that artwork, the sculptors have now started doing work. I should think that 
the final choice by the every member of the trust yeah. that which particular work of the sculptor will be finally installed mm -hmm. and the Pran Pratishtha ceremony would start, that decision would take place sometime by end of November okay. or maybe middle of December. The entire ceremony of Pran Pratishtha will begin sometime after 14th of yeah. January, mm -hmm. that is the Makar Sankranti. Correct. It normally should take seven days to ten days. Okay. And it will all be decided by the so called specialists, the saints, the sages mm. who are responsible for this entire work of imparting the life in the idol. Mm -hmm. The day of completion will be so matched with the day of the arrival of the Prime Minister. Okay. We are expecting invitation has been given to Honorable Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. The office bearers of the trust have made a request to the Prime Minister's office to meet him personally mm. and also extend the invitation, personal personally. invitation. And we are expecting that the date will be announced sometime by first week of December about sure. the Prime Minister's program. But with all the other engagements of his, including the Republic Day Parade, etc., Correct. Correct. it is safe to presume that it will be anything between 20th of January to 25th of January or 24th of January. The okay. final date and time, of course, has to come from him. What about the other invitees? Who else uh, have you called? I believe the Trust has said that over 5,000 people have been invited. Who, who are these people? The uh, work for inviting people is entirely entrusted to General Secretary, mm -hmm. who is Mr. Champatraiji. But uh, the broad breakup is that roughly 2,000 saints okay. who were involved right from the very beginning in, you know, bringing this date mm. to reality, they would be invited, sure. uh, their representatives, uh, different, different, as we call them, believers, mm -hmm. in different form of prayers and idols, sure. they will be invited. And another list of about 5,000 or 6,000 will be the distinguished guests of different walks of the society. Okay. They will be requested to come in the ceremony. So in all, uh, it is expected that the day the Prime Minister arrives and he would be inside the temple premises, it will be something of the order of 8,000 to 10,000 guests who will be there. Okay. Yeah. The other significant thing, and I guess the most uh, uh, viewer interest is in this question as to when will it be open for the public? Uh, will it be right after the uh, consecration ceremony itself? And how many people are you expecting? How many pilgrims are you expecting <laughs> on a daily basis? Yeah. Uh, we actually gave this job of crowd management to one of the public sector undertaking of railways called Rights. Okay. They have done the study and they have actually uh, surveyed the people who came in the last Ram Naomi mm -hmm. and on some of the other festivals. Okay. Based on that, the expectation is that roughly each day immediately after the Pran Pratishtha and when the Prime Minister leaves, the next day onwards, we will have uh, devotees maybe of 1.25 lakhs to 1.50 lakhs. So more than 1 every lakh day. every day. Oh, yes. And it will be open right, up, right from the next day. Yes. Okay. It will be open to everybody from the next day. So how is, uh, I mean, I, I've been to Ayodhya last before COVID, um, so my impressions are from back then. Uh, how is a small town like Ayodhya gearing up to service, you know, uh, over a lakh people every single day? It is a challenging task. And of course, the Ayodhya is changing every day. True. The state government is doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It has already undertaken work of about 14 kilometers around the temple, the access roads which are coming. 
and uh, they will all be completed by December. But you are right, a city which has a population of fixed permanent population of 3 lakhs will have always a migratory population of 5 lakhs. Sure. So it means where would they stay, yeah. what are they going to eat, yeah. what about the civic facilities, it's a challenge. Mm. And then there are different means by which they will be coming. There will be a series of committed uh, trains which will come. Sure. The airlines would have begun. So the airport will be functional. The airport would be functional by October end and November, middle of November. Okay. So we are expecting that the commercial airlines would fly in by middle of December. Mm -hmm. So that will be then the obvious road link is there. So all this taken together, uh, it cr sort of creates, has its own problems. Yeah. Where would you park the buses? Where would you park the other four wheelers? Mm -hmm. Where are they going to stay? Are they going to walk two kilometers to the temple? Yeah. Are they going to walk one kilometer? But what about elderly? Yeah, what true. kind of facility? Are we going to have shuttle services? So there is a very strong group under the chief secretary mm -hmm. of Uttar Pradesh, mm -hmm. which has been formed to monitor the entire issue of providing facilitating comforts to the devotees who enter the temple. So after this, uh, do you expect some kind of a corridor, if you will, between Kashi, uh, Ayodhya, and Mathura because these are the three holiest sites for Hindus. Do you, do you expect, uh, have you already been uh, requested uh, to, to, you know, uh, head that project? I think something? those who will come to Ayodhya, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they will like to go to Varanasi definitely. Sure. The natural corridor is Prayagraj, which is Allahabad, mm -hmm. then Kashi and Ayodhya. Ayodhya. This. And on the western front, of course, is Mathura. So the natural catchment is and the link is between Ayodhya and Kashi. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. And we were told that in Kashi, similar trend has happened. Every day, yeah. a new crowd and devotee, 50 to 75,000 people are coming. coming. It is on that basis only that we thought 1.25 lang uh, lakhs is uh, going to be the normal number at least for the next three to four months. Sure. You said earlier that, you know, your position was born out of the Supreme Court verdict. Uh, I just want your thoughts on this because of the complex history of the movement itself and there was, there was violence as well. Uh, what would you say to those people that, you know, this, the, because of the complex history and the, and the political nature of it, what would you say to them, you know, as we approach this uh, consecration day, the opening of the Ram Temple? Actually, that mood was set by Prime Minister's message. Mm -hmm. When the Supreme Court judgment came, Honorable Prime Minister said there should be no misplaced euphoria. Mm -hmm. There has to be no winner. There has to be no loser. And honestly, I have been visiting Ayodhya. I mean, perhaps next visit of mine will be the 50th visit oh. to Ayodhya that I would have made. And in all these months and years that I have been there, there is no such thing acrimonious atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There is no community divide. Everybody accepts that the temple is here. Everybody accepts that the mosque is being constructed about 25 kilometers away. And there is no feeling at all that something was demolished. Earlier something was demolished, there is a historical game of demolition mm. and reconstruction, all those things, it's history, it's okay. forgotten. That I have often recognized that that was one single contribution of the judiciary, mm -hmm. the judgment which they gave in November of 2019. Yeah. It brought down the temperature of the country immediately to normal. And since then, the issue is dead. Were you surprised when the verdict came and there was mm -hmm. no visible fallout to the verdict? Yes, a few political parties made some, made some noise about it. But at the level of the people, uh, it's like, okay, either, you know, this is a chapter of history that we want to put behind us and, and move forward. Or maybe, you know, all these anticipated fears were misplaced. 
I think the first thing, of course, is the citizens have tremendous faith in judiciary. Mm -hmm. Even during the dispute, everyone said whatever is the judicial pronouncement, we will accept. We'll abide by that. Correct. We'll accept that. Correct. So that is the first. And secondly, over the years, it was almost taken now as accepted fact that there will be temple and there will be a mosque. And that is what has happened. Okay. Uh, last couple of questions. I want to ask you about, you know, the, the funding and there's been some controversy around that as well. How is the temple building funded? Is it entirely by devotees, by, by Ram Bhaks, or is there some government involvement as well? And there is no money from government. Zero. Either of, of the state government or of the, or of the central government. Okay. Even let me give you, when we are buying wood for the construction of mm. doors, we had approached the Forest Corporation of Maharashtra. There were certain requests made mm -hmm. that the corporation may like to gift it sure. for the temple, but it was denied. Okay. It was not accepted. Okay. The simple principle is it will be built by the donation of the devotees. Mm. And roughly the collection has been of the order of 3,500 crores. Mm -hmm. The collection has come from about 4 lakh villages, or little more than 4 lakh villages, who, where the individual people are connected, contacted. And from the coupon of rupees 10 to coupon of rupees 1,000 and rupees 2,000 and beyond, all that was utilized. And it is a matter of great satisfaction that when roughly I would imagine that about 25,000 uh, sevaks mm -hmm. were requested to contact the villages and the people in the community, okay. they were given the coupon and they returned the coupon, they returned the accounts and then 100% audit has been done. 100% audit has been so done. So roughly how many people do you think have contributed, donated? Oh, it's definitely, definitely families I'm talking about. Sure. More than five lakh families. More than five lakh families. Families. Do you also I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you also the number otherwise will be more. It, it might be more. But at the very least, five yeah. lakh families. Yeah. Do you also want to speak to the allegations that had come surfaced uh, some time back about corruption and misuse of funds and so on and so forth? No, 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 no. There was no such allegation ever about the misuse of funds. What was said was that certain land was purchased. Mm -hmm. And that land, either it was paid on exorbitant price, yes, correct, or it was a Nazul land which was bought again. Now the problem is the fact mm. that if you really want to see Ayodhya records, almost entire Ayodhya is Nazul land. Mm. So anybody who is settled there for the last hundred years, perhaps if you scratch, you will say you are occupying, you are an encroacher. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the life is that. Now, we urgently wanted some little land. It is, uh, if we have got, let us say, 71 acres, yeah. as a result of the purchase of the new land, our total area will not be more than 75 acres. Sure. So, the total purchase is not of the order of more than 4 acres. Okay. And all that which was bought, it was said either that it was a Nadul land. Yes, we recognize that. Mm -hmm. But we had to buy it. And after all, even in Vishwana temple, yeah. when the houses were Correct. bought, Correct. Yeah. the records were not checked, the people were given compensation because they were living there for 100 years. Correct. And Correct. this was then dismantled. Mm. So in such kind of settlements, these things do happen, but it, the inquiry was entrusted to the commissioner of the division and he has given a certificate that there has been no irregularity in the purchase. All right, and one final word because this is in the news and since you are the chairperson of the, uh, the trust that's building the temple, uh, this whole controversy around the Sanatan Dharma, uh, what is your take on that? Is there a misinterpretation of the phrase or, and, and especially speaking as, as the chairperson of the, the trust that's building the Ram Temple, what is your understanding of? You see, whatever, it will be very personal opinion. Of course. Of course. Because it has yeah. nothing to do with my construction committee chairman. My own uh, 
opinion is that Sanatan is a way of life. Mm -hmm. The entire country is in some ways or the other is Sanatani in that kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. What does the Sanatan mean? It only means that you love your human beings, you worship your God whom you believe in and toleration. That is what the Sanatan tells you. So as far as the, my personal belief is concerned, that is a fact that I believe in Sanatan Dham and I also believe that it has provided a stability to this country. And the second thing, let me assure you that the word and the controversy doesn't touch Ayodhya. Not a single man there mm -hmm. would even bother about the controversy of Sanatan. He has his life, he has to look after, he knows that his economy is going to grow any times more, True. perhaps nth number more than what before, and he is happy with that. But, but this, this whole surround sound, the noise around it, it's on television debates, it's on front pages of newspapers, has not touched the temple town. I can assure you it is only less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, yeah. Nipindra Mishra, Thank for speaking you. with us Thank here you. on CNN News 18. Thank you.